everybody. Good to see everybody on this beautiful Monday, a new Monday, a new week. And as I always say, another chance to get it right. <laughs> our lesson today is, our lesson today could be, it could have been a kingdom business. And in a, in a way it is, and it's not. Now you see the title, Commitments to God. Our lesson today, Commitments to God, Follow Up. Now, Commitments to God is a lesson, and Follow Up is the kingdom business. <laughs> the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit kind of said, uh, let's do a follow-up. Now, we've talked about many commitments on the fellowship, personal commitments, as well as commitments we've made together as a fellowship, iron sharpening iron. We're, talk we're talking about whatever commitment you've made to the Lord and the importance of keeping the commitment. And when you commit to something, don't just do it every day. Oh, excuse me. Don't just do it every now and then. Do it every day. When you commit to something, in order to stay true to your commitment, you must do it every day. If you're trying to change something in your life, you must work on that every day. If you're trying to change your mind, work on that every day. Just don't say, I commit, and then do it once a week, once a month. If you're trying to change something in your life, you got to work on it every day in order to make the change happen. Otherwise, doing the doing the, the gap in between your working on it, the devil tries to come in and discourage you and whisper to you, say, it's not working. Your commitment is not working. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Doesn't matter what you're committed to. Doesn't matter what you're working on. If you're having trouble, if you're having trouble, stay committed. To say, Lord, give me strength. Lord, forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, for being inconsistent. Lord, forgive me for not staying on task. Please forgive me, Lord. Give me strength to stay focused, Lord. Give me strength to stay on task. I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to do something right now. I got to make it a habit. Amen, Deanna? We got to make it a habit. And the only way you make something a habit is by doing the new thing every day for at least 30 days. They say between the, the officially they say between 21 and 30 days. If you're trying to change something about yourself, you got to do it 21 to 30 days straight in order to make it a habit. You're trying to bring a new habit, replace a old habit. To replace a old habit, you have to do the new habit. I just say 30 days. I just make it 30 days because the the old habit will fight you. Let me say that again. The old habit will fight you and try to come back. So even if you've been to, even if you've been victorious for 30 days, don't think the old the old ways will still try to come back. But the, the longer you the longer you walk in a new habit, the stronger you get. But you, you can't be wishy washy. You can't do it one day, skip a day one day, skip a day, just like when you're trying to you trying to fast and pray, or you're trying to eat right. You eat you you eat good on Monday, and Tuesday you cheat. You eat good on Wednesday, and Thursday you cheat. You gotta stay consistent. It in order to make the change happen, you got to be consistent and do it every day. Your body's gonna fight you. Your old habit will fight you, but in order to walk into victory over it. You got to tell it, no, I don't do that anymore. I did not walk in a new way. Like, like, like we see in the scripture, old things passed away. Old habit. Old habit becomes an old thing. And once the old habit is an old thing, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's your new you. That's the new you. The new you is walking now. Not yesterday. I said all the time, the new you is walking now. Who you are now is who you are. New habit, keep walking in it. A new, a new focus, stay on it. The devil, the devil will always try to distract you. The devil will always try to distract you, to pull you back, to pull you off course. You got to understand that. You got to understand that no matter what you're trying to do, the devil is trying to knock you off course. 
So when you make a commitment, when you make a commitment to God, add prayer to it. Just don't say the commitment and go away. Say the commitment and then pray for strength. Say your commitment, whatever your commitment is, repeat it and then pray for strength. Lord, give me strength to stay committed. Give me strength, Lord, to stay committed, to stay focused. And you got to do this every day. You got to you got to do this every day. Don't just say it, but do it. Lord, like like we said before, we said uh, last uh, about six months ago, we commit as a fellowship. I commit to stay focused. I, Lord, I commit to connect you every day. We said it together. Lord, I commit to stay connected to you every day, which means what? Lord, I commit to pray and talk to you every day, to stand still and talk to you every day. We said that together. <laughs> now, I'm not asking you to say, well, I, I, I'm not doing that. I, I failed. No, don't ever think fail. Don't ever think failure. Maybe you had trouble staying consistent. Maybe you got distracted. That is not failure. Excuse me. That is not failure. If you're trying to do something new and you keep slipping, just say, Lord, Lord, forgive me, Lord. Lord, I'm trying to do this right. Lord, I'm trying to do a new thing, Lord. Give me strength to stay strong. Don't say, oh, man, Lord, I failed, Lord. I failed. I give up. I can't do it. No, you're speaking death. I can't do it. It's too late for me. I'm too weak. I, I don't know how to do it. I'm panicking. No, speak life. Speak life. Lord, give me strength, Lord. Give me strength to make this commitment, to stay true to it. G give me strength, Lord to stay on task. Give me strength, Lord, to stay focused. So you pray for it. You pray for the focus. Don't give in to the distractions. Just say, Lord, forgive me. I'm, I'm having a little trouble right now, Lord. I'm having a little bit, a little trouble staying focused. Give me strength, Lord, to stay focused. I receive it right now. I receive your strength to stay focused on my goal, on my task, on my assignment. Whatever it is you need focus on, pray for strength to stay focused on that task, on the thing that you, you're working on, that your, your divine assignment, your goal, your dream, whatever it is, you're trying to stay focused on it. You got to see it. I always say it all the time. You got to see it. You got to see it. When you commit to it, you got to see it. See yourself committed. If you see yourself in your visualization, in your mind, and you see yourself praying every day, you, you, you close your eyes and you see yourself praying on your knees or in the bed, wherever you are praying. See yourself praying. See yourself dancing in victory. See yourself saying, praise God for my breakthrough. See the victory. When you pray, when you pray what? Believe you have received it. When you pray, Mark eleven twenty four. 24, Mark eleven twenty four. 24. When you pray, believe you have received received it but if you can't see it you can't believe you received it if you can't see it you got to see the victory i say this all the time if you can't see it you can't believe it because the devil is trying to keep you from seeing the victory seeing your breakthrough seeing you dancing for joy to know it's going to be all right see yourself shouting praise god see yourself saying thank you jesus i'm healed see the celebration see it. you got to see it and then when you see it you believe it you get excited and now you receive it in your heart. You're so excited. I can't wait, Lord. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Lord, for my healing. Thank you for my breakthrough. Thank you for provision. You get excited because you see it. You see it. You receive it. And now you're excited. I can't wait, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. I'm, I'm delivered. I'm protected. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Lord. I'm, I got my breakthrough. I got my breakthrough. Thank you, Lord. I'm excited. Oh, Lord, it's already done. It's already done. I just can't wait to see it in the, in the flesh, Lord. Because in the spirit, it's already done. I got to wait for you now. I just got to wait. Oh, Lord, help me stay patient, Lord. I just can't wait. Oh, I can't wait, Lord. It's already done. It's already done. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for my healing. Thank you for provision. Thank you for my commitment to being successful. Thank you for my goals are successful. Whatever you're doing, be thankful for it. In advance. Even before you see it in the flesh, thank him in advance. Because in the spirit, it's already done. In the spirit, it's already done. The reason we're excited is it's on the way. The reason we're excited is because 
it's on the way to the flesh. The manifestation is on its way. See, when you when you order something, you order something by my mail order. You order something, and they tell you it'll be here in 15 days. So as the days go by, as it gets closer to delivery time, what happens? You get more and more excited. Oh man, my, my package is coming. My order is coming. And what's happening? You get excited because I ordered something two weeks ago. And now the 15 days approaching. Oh, it, oh, it's any time now. It's coming today. Oh, I can't wait. My order is coming today. Now, look at that in the spiritual realm. You prayed for something. You prayed for something. And you believe you received it. The only difference is we don't know the exact when. We don't know the exact when, but you know it's already done. So when you pray and believe you have received it, get excited. Because since you don't know the exact since you don't know the exact date, and I say this every day, because you don't know the exact date, that means any day could be the, the answer to your prayer. Any day could be supernatural healing. Any day could be breakthrough. Wake up. Wake up joyful, wake up on fire. Oh man, this is this the day? Is this day of my healing? Is this day is this the day of my breakthrough? Is this the day? Oh man, is this the day? You wake up every day excited because this could be the day. Don't sit there, man. I've been praying for years. I don't know when God's gonna happen. Don't say that. That's death. Don't speak death. I don't I've been praying for years. I don't know how long it's gonna take. When God gonna bless me, you're speaking death. Don't speak death. Don't time God. Don't time God. When you time God, you are doubting. Oh man, I, I hope he heard me. I hope I prayed right. I hope I said, I hope God's not mad at me. That's doubt. That's doubt trying to sneak in because you're not waiting for the Lord. When you wait for the Lord, I don't know where it's coming, Lord. I don't know where it's coming, but I can't wait. I don't know when my healing's coming, but I can't wait. I don't know. My, oh, Lord, I can know. I know the blessings. The blessings. The blessings are on the way. Oh, girl, leave me excited. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just thank Him every day. Thank you, Lord. My blessings are here. Thank you, Lord. My healing is already done. See, even though, even as you wait for it, thank you, Lord. My healing. Thank you for my provision. Thank you for my breakthrough, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord, I feel it already. I can feel the excitement, Lord, because it's already done. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. That is the law of expectancy. The law of expectancy means I expect it. You got to wake up expecting it. Don't don't wake up going, how long is it going to be? I wonder when God's going to move. No, you wake up every day. Is this the day? Wow. Is this the day of my miracle? Is this the day of my healing? Is this the day of my breakthrough? You wake up excited like Santa Claus. Santa, is that Santa Claus? Whoa, is Santa Claus in the living room? <laughs> Remember as a kid, oh, is that Santa Claus? Do I hear Santa Claus in the, in the living room? And there's a cookie. Wow, there's a cookie by the tree. Santa Claus, he ate the cookie. There's a bite of the cookie. Santa Claus was here. Oh my God, somebody took a bite. It must be Santa Claus. <laughs> but remember, remember as a kid, remember how, remember how excited you were. Remember how excited you were. Amen, Gary. <laughs> remember how excited you were. Expecting it. Expecting it. You got so excited expecting your gift under the tree. It's no different. When you pray, believe you have received it, expect it. Whatever you're praying for, whatever you're praying for, get excited. It's on the way. I, because I believe I received it, you shall have it. It's telling you, when you pray, believe you have received it, and you shall have it. Get excited about it. I, I don't I don't know where it's coming, but it's just, just knowing, just knowing it's on the way feeds my excitement. Just knowing it's on the way. I don't even know where it's coming. Oh, I can't wait. Oh, I know. Every, every day. Oh, Lord, Lord, help me see. Help me stay calm, Lord. I can't wait for my miracle. I know my miracles anytime. I thank you, Lord, right now. I thank you, Lord, in advance for miracle. I thank you in advance for supernatural healing. I thank you in advance for provision. I thank you in advance for breakthrough. Thank you, Lord. Whew, hallelujah. You might do a shout dance even as you wait for it. You shouting. You shouting because you are expecting it. You shout 
because you are expected. It's already done. So you, as you wait for the Lord, shout. As you wait for the Lord, thank him. As you wait for the Lord, as you wait for the Lord, thank him. First Thessalonians, first Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. First Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Pray, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God for you. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. Good times, bad times. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God for you. To pray without ceasing. Good and bad. Praise your way through it. Pray your way through it. But don't give up. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Pray without ceasing. Good times and bad times. For this is the will of God for you. In everything give thanks. It could be hard right now. It could be hard right now. But thank God it's not worse. Doesn't matter how hard it is right now. Thank God it's not worse. In everything give thanks. So when things are bad, give thanks that it's not worse. <laughs> it doesn't matter how bad it is right now. Give thanks that it's not worse. It can always be worse. No matter how bad it is, it could always be worse. Give thanks that it's not worse. Give thanks, Lord. I know things are hard right now, but praise God, it's not, it's not, it's not worse. I, I used to tell you all the time when when I when I thought when I thought I had hard times, and the Lord would I show, I told you this before, OG twos and one, two, threes. I told you before. Every time I be I would be downtrodden. Hey, Michael Lynn, Every time I would feel depressed, and I think my life is going bad. The 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 the, the Lord would show me this, this this friend of mine I would see at the at the Seven Eleven every day. This I, I told you before. He was a quadriplegic. Quadriplegic. All he could move on his wheelchair was his head. He drove his wheelchair with his mouth. He turned it with his mouth. Nothing else moved but his head and his neck. And whenever I was depressed, it was almost like God God gave me this as a wake-up call. Every time I got depressed, that would be the day I would see this man who couldn't move anything but his head. And the first thing he said, praise God, young man. How you doing? God is so good. Now, wait a minute. Hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm feeling all downtrodden and thinking my life is bad. Here comes a man who can only move his neck, blow through the blow through the thing, blow through the thing on his on his chair to to guide the chair, move it left, move it right, and then people would put groceries in the back of the chair for him. And the first thing he says to me is, "Praise God, young man, God is so good." I sat there, I went to the car, I had to, I had to stop, I had to go back to the car and cry, Lord, please, Lord, please forgive me. For, for not being thankful for what I got. I mean, this man can't move anything but his head. I'm I'm feeling depressed, but I can walk. I got my limbs. I can I can move. This man can only move his neck, and he's praising you. I can move my entire body, and I'm saying, man, my times are man, my times are so hard, Lord. I'm having trouble, Lord. I'm having trouble making it. And then I see a, this man, and this man would only appear. He would only appear. On the days I felt like I couldn't make it. As a wake-up call, you think you got it bad. You think you got it bad? Look at him. Don't, don't sit there and go to a pity party. Be thankful for what you got. This man was so thankful that he could move his neck and his mouth. He was praising God with his head. <laughs> that may sound funny, but the joy, the joy of the Lord was all in this brother. The joy of the Lord was all in this brother. And it taught me, it taught me, no, ma no matter what you go through, no matter what you go through, it may feel bad. It may feel bad, but still be thankful. Amen, Jonathan. That man was just glad to be alive. The fact that he was alive, the joy of the Lord was in him. The fact that he was alive, he treasured that. Sometimes we get... We get in a pity party. Man, I can't do this. I can't do that. How come I can't do this? And the pity party, the devil comes in. Yeah, look at you. You can't do that. Get thee behind me, Satan. Whenever you go into a pity party, 
the devil comes in and says, yeah, that's right. You are no good. Yeah, you are. Look what you don't have. Yeah, the devil's going, the devil's going to accentuate that. He's going to take whatever negativity you have and make it worse because he sees you. He sees you not being grateful for what you got. And when he sees us not being grateful, he comes in and says, that's right. God left you. God hates you. Look at you. Look at what you don't look at what you don't have. Get him behind me, Satan. Now, when it comes to commitment, now the, the reason I the reason I gave you that, that little section is when it comes to commitment to God. If you remember, if you remember your commitment is to God, not to men. If you remember your commitment is is to God that should help you focus it's one thing if you, you, you can't commit to a friend you can't commit to family you can't commit to another person but when you don't commit to God when you make a commitment and don't do it when you make a commitment to God and don't do it and don't even try to to finish it is bordering on disobedience because what we're committing to if God says if God says Pray without ceasing. And we don't do it. What is that? If, if the word says, pray without ceasing, and we don't pray, but the word says, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks. And you don't pray every day. So what are we doing? The word says this, and we're not doing it. What is not doing it? We're trying to live by the word, and when you don't do the word, that's walking in disobedience. The words tell us, the word tells us how to live. The word tells us how to live our life and stay focused and connected to him. But when you don't do it and the word is telling you to do it and you don't do it, even if you're saved, we have to work on being obedient. Just because you're saved doesn't mean you're automatically obedient. Obedience is a challenge. Obedience must be a commitment. We must commit to live by the word. We must commit to obey the word. We must commit to do what the word says to live by his will and his way. Because we know the flesh is not working that way. The flesh is working against us. The flesh will always work against us. The flesh is of the world. Our spirit is of God. Our flesh is of the world. Our spirit is God. That's the work. That's the battle right there. That's the battle right there. Flesh versus spirit. The flesh wants the world. Your spirit wants God. And whatever you're feeding, whatever you feed the most is what your body will follow. Let me say it again. Whatever you're feeding the most is what your body will follow. You pray and stay connected. Your body stays in obedience because you stay connected. If you disconnect, your body and flesh goes to the world and craves the world. When you disconnect from God, you're connecting with the world. Whoa. Let me say that again. When you disconnect from God, you are connecting with the world. And the world will pull you down. The world will bring fear, anxiety, stress, struggle, attacks, all the stuff. When you connect with the world, hey, Deborah, when you connect with the world, you are connecting to the wrong thing. That's the wrong source. To keep your joy, your peace, your faith, your hope, connect to God in order to stay connected and keep the flesh under control. But when you disconnect, you give the flesh strength. You give the flesh power and you give the devil power. Because you just disconnected from the source that keeps you at peace, keeps you focused. Your focus is connected to your peace. When you can't focus, when you can't focus, usually there's a problem with your peace. Let me say it again. When you struggle with focus, usually something's wrong with your peace of mind. When your peace of mind is, is off balance. Your peace of mind is not solid. It affects your focus. When you're at peace, <laughs> when you're at peace, 
you have no problem focusing. But when your peace is disturbed, there goes your focus. That's why our peace of mind is what the devil attacks most. Our peace of mind is what the devil attacks most. Because when you lose your peace of mind, it affects everything in your life. When you lose your peace of mind, it affects everything. The way you look at things, the way you work, the way you focus, the way you achieve. Here, here comes procrastination because you gave procrastination strength when you disconnected. Procrastination is not of God. So when you understand this, when you make a commitment to God, even, even if you're not successful with the commitment you made, every time you don't do it, be aware. You must be aware of when you're not doing it. And when you're not doing it, you pray for strength. Oh, Lord, I said, Lord, I said, I was going to pray every day, Lord. I, I committed to pray every day. Lord, I missed three days. Lord, give me strength, Lord. Lord, I need strength, Lord. I, Lord, give me strength to stay focused and make sure I pray and spend time with you every day. I got busy. I let the world come in. I got busy. I didn't pray one day last week because I got busy and the world, the world pulled me in and I forgot to pray every day last week. And last week was total hell. Why? Because you didn't start with peace. You didn't connect. You let the world get busy and you didn't connect. And your entire week was crazy because you didn't connect to hold your peace. To hold your peace, you must connect. When you're connected, you hold your peace. You're focused. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And you praise God anyhow because you're connected. When you're connected. There's something to remember. <clears throat> most of our commitments, most of our commitments is for our own good, which means we're taking care of your temple. When you take when you remember, when you remember this flesh doesn't belong to us. This flesh belongs to God. So when we don't commit, we don't eat right, we don't exercise. We don't stay focused and we don't stay disciplined. You are mistreating a temple that doesn't belong to you. When you remember, we, our body is the temple where the Holy Spirit lives. When you remember that, that should help you stay focused. Man, wait a minute. I got to take care of this temple. I got I to stay focused. Lord, give me strength, Lord. Please forgive me, Lord. I've been abusing my temple. I've been disrespecting my my temple. I've been disrespecting your temple. <laughs> my flesh. Lord, please forgive me for disrespecting your temple. Give me strength, Lord, to eat right, and exercise right, and do what I need to do. Get rest. Take care of myself. Help me, Lord, stay focused, Lord. Help me stay focused to take care of your temple. So your commitment, if your commitment is wavering, I can't emphasize this enough. If your commitment is wavering, your prayer is for strength to be able to work on the commitment every day. Your prayer, your prayer is for strength. Your prayer is for strength to be able to do it every day. Whatever you're trying to do, whatever your goal is, whatever you are trying to bring into your life, you got to stay committed and make sure you do it every day. Every day, as a man thinks, as a man thinks, so he is. Proverbs 23 7. I say these two scriptures all the time. Proverbs 23 7. As a man thinks, so he is. If you're trying to stay committed, you're trying to stay committed. What are you what are you feeding your mind? Whatever you feed the mind should be trying to help you accomplish your commitment. Whatever you commit to, feed the commitment. If you're trying to stay focused, do things that help you focus. Stand still. Stay at peace. If your goal is to hold your peace, practice standing still. Practice standing still every day. So when you need to stand still, it's easy because you stand still every day when you don't need it. 
Have no fear, stand still. Even when you don't need it, have no fear and just stand still and enjoy the Lord. Enjoy his peace. And you do it every day. Now it's a habit. Now it's a habit. And now when you need it, now when you're under attack, you automatically start, have no fear, stand still. The other scripture, Proverbs Proverb 18.21, Proverbs 18.21 Life and death are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat of its fruit. When you commit to something, life and death are in the power of the tongue. You commit to do it. You're committing to do it. I make a commitment to the Lord. I'm speaking it. Lord, Lord, I commit. Lord, I commit to I commit to pray every day. Lord, I commit to trust you. Lord, I commit to, to stand still. And have no fear. I commit to this, Lord. Now, I just spoke that. I just spoke it. Now, in order to make it a habit, in order to make sure you do it, you got to say it every day. Say it every day. Think it every day. Say it every day. Think it every day. Say it every day. You got to get that into your spirit so, so strong that when you're under attack, you automatically have no fear. Stand still. Your knee-jerk reaction is not stress. Your knee-jerk reaction is not panic. You you automatically have no fear. Stand still. Thank you, Jesus. Chill, stand still. Because you chill and stand still every day. When you're under attack, you automatically chill, stand still. Because you do it every day. Whether you're under attack or not. Whether you're under attack or not. When you do something every day, it becomes a knee-jerk reaction. And you want that. When you're praying for your commitment to be to be strong with the Lord, what to trust him every day, to connect every day, stand still every day. You got to do it every day. Do it until you feel you need it. Have you have you ever noticed? Have you ever noticed that after you've done something, uh let's say for example, after you've if you after you fasted for 30 days. And you feel so good. At first, it was hard. The first part of the fast was hard. But then, at the end, the fast is easy. Have you ever noticed that after the fast is over, you miss it? You miss the discipline. Because your body felt so good in the, in the, in the fasting period. And you, you're praying more. You had more peace. And now the fast is over. And you say, man, I'm, I miss praying every day. I got to keep doing that. I, I miss eating right. I got to keep doing that because once you receive the new habit, your your flesh, your flesh expects the new habit. Don't do don't do a new habit for thirty days and then go back to the old habit. <laughs> you defeat the purpose. The reason you fast and pray is to change something and keep it changed. Don't fast and pray for thirty days and then go back. Go back to what you're fasting on. No, the key to fast and praying is to walk in victory from that point on. If, if you successfully made your fast for 30 days and you the things you cut out, the thing, whatever you cut out in your fast for 30 days, when 30 days is over, keep them out. Don't bring them back. Don't bring what you fasted on back because you. the reason you fast and pray is to make a new you, a better you, to get those things out, to get under control. Don't go back to the same things after the fast. You defeat the purpose of the fast. You fast and pray to put the spirit in control. The fast is over. You keep the spirit in control. Don't let the flesh come back just because you stop fasting. The fasting is to help you start a new way of thinking, a new way of praying, a more intense way of seeking God's face. That's why you fast and pray, to get closer to God. And when the fast is over, don't go back to just praying once a week. You should, you should want to pray every day. After praying for 30 days straight more, you miss it. Man, I had such peace. I had such peace during the fast. Now, even though even though we're so far in the lesson, I need to give you this this scripture just to write this down. The the actual text, <laughs> I skipped the text, John. <laughs> yeah. The text for this lesson, the text for this lesson is actually First Corinthians, First Corinthians six, 
17 to 20. 1 Corinthians 6, 17 to 20. That is the text for today's message. So I'm going to read it right now. God, I want you to understand your commitment to God. Your commitment to God is helping your temple. So when you, when you speak a commitment to God and you don't do it, you are affecting your own temple because your commitment to God will always help your temple. Let's read here. Verse 17, start there. But the one who joins himself to Lord is one spirit with him, him being Lord. Flee immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man, the immoral man sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple for the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Glorify God in your body. When we commit, when we make a commitment to the Lord and to be better, to take care of your temple, to pray more, eat right, exercise, to stay focused on God, connect every day. These are glorifying God through your temple. The word says, it says, therefore, glorify God with your temple. So when you're taking care of yourself, because you know I got to take care of, I got to take care of this gift God has given me. Your, your body is a gift from God. Your body is a gift from God. When you know your body is a gift from God, not just, you didn't, put, you, <laughs> you didn't go over to the 99 cent store and get your body. I, you, you didn't go to, down to 7-Eleven and, and buy your body. No, God gave this body. Almighty God, gave us this body. This body has value. It doesn't matter how man judges you. The, your body, your body, who you are, has value. It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what the world says. God gave you this body, whatever your body is, God gave you this flesh to, to glorify him in. So when you, when you smile, you glorify your body, your temple, when you're in a, in a, when you let his light shine through you, you're glorifying your body, his temple. Whatever you're doing in your flesh that glorifies God, that is glorifying God, glorifying God with your temple. So when you can, when you make a commitment, now what I want you to do, the, the other part of this title says commitments to God. Then it says follow up. Now, you don't have to tell me unless you want to, but what you what what I want you to do on a piece of paper is write write down on a piece of paper right now for you for you write down on a piece of paper what commitments have you made with the Lord what commitments have you made with the Lord that you haven't done and what have you done so your list has what commitments. Have I done left side column? What commitments have I not done? See, we base we as a fellowship made a few commitments together, but what commitments have you done personally to Lord that you have not done? Now, this is not to make you feel bad. This is make you to make you realize what needs to be corrected. You're not you're not doing this list to feel bad. You're doing this list. To make sure, man, I gotta correct that. I told Lord, I told Lord I was gonna eat better, but I didn't do it. I'm still eating everything. I told Lord I was gonna start exercising, but I didn't do it. I'm still sitting, I'm still a couch potato. <laughs> so whatever whatever the commitment is, when you write it down, I I committed this, but I still haven't done it. Or I'm I do it a little bit, but I'm not doing it every day. You must be honest with yourself. You must be honest with yourself. When you're trying to correct something, 
when you try to make sure your commitments to, to God are on task, on schedule, you got to look at yourself, self-evaluation, self-evaluation. Am I doing everything I committed to God? Am I doing my best to fulfill my commitment I made to God? Am I really taking care of my temple? Am I really making sure I'm hanging around the right people? Am I protecting my ear gate, my eye gate? Am I protecting am I the, my, my ear gate from the naysayers and negative people around me? Or am I hanging around negative people? See, this checklist is for you. Now, if you want to share with me under archives, if you want to share with me under archives, please leave any comments under archives. I want to make sure I can respond to them after the lesson. So any any commitment you made that if this is only only if you want to do this, any commitment you made to the Lord, any commitment you made and you didn't do and need to work on, put that under the under the video. I, I'll answer this one here. Uh, hey, infinitely, infinitely superior. Hey, what if you uh, if you forgot? Well, what you do, what you do, uh, uh, infinitely, uh, what you do, infinitely, is when you go and go into prayer. If you if you forgot what your commitment is, go into prayer. Holy Spirit, please, please reveal to me the commitment I haven't done. See, usually, usually your commitment, the reason you may have forgotten your commitment, when you forget your commitment, it may have meant that when you made the commitment, it wasn't that urgent at the time. Usually when you make a commitment, you know you need it. But if you write a commitment and you just, you're not really, well, I'll, I'll write this down. That sounds good. You forgot it because whatever commitment you wrote down, it wasn't something you said, I got to do this. I need to change. I got to commit. I got to get my life together. I must commit to do this. So if you can't remember it infinitely, if you can't remember it, when you go into prayer, sometimes the Holy Spirit will remind you. But when you go into prayer, pray for it. Holy Spirit, amen, Tanya. Holy Spirit, give me remembrance of my commitments to you, Lord. Give me remembrance to remember what I committed to you that I must work on. You pray for it if you forgot it. Because sometimes, sometimes the commitment, was like I said before, if you made the commitment because it sounded good, that wasn't a commitment. If you, if you write down a commitment only because it sounded good, that is not a commitment. It sounded good. A commitment comes when, man, I got to do this. I'm tired of this. I'm right now, I'm committing to God. I need some peace of mind. I'm committing right now to connect to the Lord because I need some peace of mind. You don't forget that. I'm right now, Lord. I commit right now. I commit right now, Lord, to stay focused on you, Lord, because I'm giving in to all those distractions in the world. I'm committing right now, Lord, to hold my peace and stay focused on you. See, you, the reason a commitment is not forgotten is because you need it to survive. Those are the ones you don't, you, you don't forget those. If your commitment is something you really need, you don't forget it. When you when it sounds good and it's not something you really need to do, it's easy to forget. But when you're making a commitment to God to help you make it through a storm, to help you make it through victory over some adversity, when you really need that commitment, you don't forget it. Amen. Now, some of the things I, I'm looking at my list here. I, I just realized the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gave me a, a two lessons in one. Because <laughs> this this part of the commitment, what we're talking about right now, is understanding is understanding the importance of the commitment as it relates to your temple. Everything you commit to usually is affecting your temple. You're praying with peace of mind, your temple. You're praying to get your, your life together, to stop the stress and anxiety. That's your temple. You, you're trying to get your temple. When we commit to something, 
we're trying to get our temple in line with God's word. Our temple fights us. Our temple is the is a flesh that God gave us for the Holy Spirit to live in. And then when we got saved, we are we are to do our best to keep the temple clean and protected and as, as holy as we can to glorify God, to give God glory with the temple, to stay focused and do the best you can in this imperfect flesh. See, Jesus came to earth. Jesus showed us how to walk in victory in the flesh. He came to earth in flesh to show us how to walk in flesh in victory. He gave all these examples. He kept saying, oh, men of little faith, I mean, which means that he, he was trying to say, I'm in the, yes, yes, I'm the son of God. Yes, I know I'm the son of God, but I'm trying to tell you, when you're in the flesh, stay focused. When you're in the flesh, have faith. And don't just have faith, walk by faith, not by sight. He's trying to tell them, oh, he must have said over and over again, oh, men of little faith. One of the things Jesus said the most, oh, men of little faith, which means faith is number one. He wouldn't repeat something over and over again if it wasn't important. And every time the disciples fail something, fail the test, he would always say, oh, men of little faith, all you need to do is believe. All you need to do is have faith. Walk by faith, not by sight. But where the flesh always wants to see. The flesh doesn't want to believe. So our spirit, our spirit must always be in control of the flesh. And that's where the battle is. The battle is spirit versus flesh. And in order to keep the spirit in control, in order to keep the spirit in control, we must consistently feed the spirit. I said every day, feed your spirit, starve your flesh. Feed your faith, starve your doubt. Your doubt is in your flesh. Feed your faith, the word of God, scriptures, pray, praise, stand still, rest in him, all those ways of feeding the spirit. When you don't pray, praise, stand still, have no fear. When you don't connect, you're now connected to the world and you lost your peace. You lost your joy because you disconnected from God and connected with the world. Even if you made a commitment, when you don't keep the commitment and you, and you don't keep trying to stay committed, at least keep working on the commitment. The key is, even if you're not successful yet with your commitment, at least keep working on it. Because when you keep working on your commitment, that means you're still focused on it. If you give up on your, if you give up on your commitment, that means it's not going to be finished because you went into the world and gave up. That's when it's failure. Failure is when you give up. Failure is only when you give up. Failure is not trying hard. If you, if you didn't make it, try again. That is not failure. Failure is only when you give up and you stop trying to connect. You stop trying to call to the Lord. You stop trying to reach for his, for his peace. You stop trying to seek his face. When you stop trying, that is failure. But if we, when you slip, and you just can't get it right. Lord, you, he sees that. He sees your heart. Lord, I'm trying, Lord. Lord, I'm struggling, Lord. Go, Lord, give me strength, Lord. I keep trying to hold my peace, but I keep losing my peace, Lord. Lord, give me strength to stay focused on my peace. Lord, I keep, I'm trying my best not to curse, Lord, but I slipped today, Lord. I'm trying my best. I'm trying my best to stay focused. Lord, give me strength. See, you pray for it. Amen. Hey, Irma, Irma. That's exactly, right. That's exactly right. We don't give up. We don't give up. And we can't give up if you're connected because I can do all things through Christ who what? Strengthens me. Philippians 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It doesn't matter how long you struggle. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So whatever it is you're working on, whatever it is you're pressing on, whatever it is you're trying to achieve, you got to keep speaking it, keep seeing it, keep speaking it, keep seeing it, keep the devil out, keep the devil out. The devil is a liar. I can do this thing. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength to never give up, who gives me strength to not, to, not, to not look at the world, who gives me strength to keep my mind stayed on him. And that's the importance that if, if, no, other, if no other commitment, the most important commitment, I say it all the time, our most important commitment is to stay connected to Lord through prayer, praise, worship, stand still, music, all the different ways to feed your spirit is staying connected. We have so many choices today. We have so many choices. Don't let the devil distract you and you don't use any choice to feed your spirit. Make some commitment to make sure you stay connected. Make sure you stay connected in some way, in some way, however it is, any or all of the above. We must make a commitment to stay connected to the Lord in some way every day. This is the commitment we made a few months ago. Now on your list, like I said before, if you want to share under archives, if you want to share anything, please put it under the archives so I can respond to it. Because what I what I want you to as I close, what I want you to focus on, what I want you to focus on is why haven't you done it? You made a commitment. You made a commitment. Why haven't you done it? Write that down for you right now. Not for me right now. Put that in archives. Why haven't you done it? What kept you from doing it? You wrote the commitment. You wrote it down. Made it plain. But you didn't do it. What kept you from doing it? You got to figure out what kept you from your commitment. And when you find out what that is, rebuke it, bind it, and cast it out in the name of Jesus. You just found out what kept you from your commitment with, with God. You got to figure that out. Otherwise, you just be you just keep failing. You keep you try you keep you keep trying and slipping. Not failing. I won't say fail. I won't say failing. You keep trying and not working. Trying, not working. Trying. Something is keeping you from even trying. See, if you keep trying, you'll eventually connect and, and have a new thing. But if you if you made a commitment and it seemed like you gave up. You didn't give up, but you just didn't do it. <laughs> you didn't give up. You just stopped doing it. You stopped trying. Something right there, something right there is blocking you. Something is blocking you. Amen, John. Trying and missing the mark. See, if you keep trying, you're active. As long as you keep trying to do the commitment, as long as you keep trying, that is active. I'm talking about when you completely stop doing it. And say, oh man, last month I committed. Oh man, I haven't done it in a month. Why haven't you done it in a month? You wrote, you found your notes last month in fellowship. I'm going to commit. I'm going to commit to stay connected every day. We said this last month. I commit to stay connected every day. And you look at your calendar, man. I haven't connected in a month. What was I doing? What was I doing for a month? You look, you look at your notes. I will commit to connect every day. And then all of a sudden, you remember, I haven't connected for a whole month. What was I doing? What was I doing? What distracted me? What pulled me off course? You got to figure that out. You got to figure that out for you in order to stay focused, to keep committed to the Lord. Whatever it is distracting you, whatever it is distracting you from your commitment with the Lord, 
find out what that is and get that thing out of your life, out of your mind, out of your spirit. Rebuke it, bind it, cast it out. Rebuke it, bind it, cast that thing out because that thing is blocking you. That thing is blocking your commitment. And your commitment is always connected to your taking care of your temple. Your commitment, your commitment is always connected to taking care of your temple. Our goal is to take care of our temple. So stay connected is helping you stay connected, is helping you stay on task and focused where you should try to go. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson today, Lord. Of making sure, Lord, we we do our best to, to fulfill our commitment with you, Lord. Help each fellowship member right now, Lord, remember, help them remember what our commitment is to you, Lord. Help us stay focused right now as a fellowship, Lord, to do the best we can to stay on task with our commitment we made to you, Lord. Bless us with supernatural focus, Lord, with focus, bless us with supernatural motivation to stay focused, Lord, to remember that our flesh is your temple for the Holy Spirit and that our body, our body is not ours, but yours, Lord. Help us to remember our temple, our bodies are your temple that you have given us, Lord. Help us to remember that to respect that and to do the best we can to treat our temple the best we can, Lord. Bless each fellowship member right now, Lord. You already know what each person's facing in this topic right now, Lord. Whatever commitment every fellowship member has made, Lord, bless that commitment right now, Lord. Bless their focus to fulfill that commitment, Lord. Give them strength, Lord, to stay focused on that goal they have in their heart. To fulfill that commitment they made to you, Lord. That will bring all of us closer to you, Lord. That will help us stay in your will and your way every day, Lord. Bless us with the motivation we need to do this every single day, Lord. To stay committed actively every single day. To be able to rebuke every distraction, everything the devil tries to throw to pull us off course, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Bless us right now with an overflow of motivation, an overflow of determination, an overflow of focus. To be able to achieve the commitment we made with you, Lord, in every area of our life, Lord. Every area of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So that's our assignment. That is our daily assignment. Our commitment to, to do the best we can with our commitments to the Lord, our, our assignment is to make sure we're doing it every day. Write it down in your calendar, write it down on your computer, on your refrigerator, on your forehead, wherever you need to write it, write it down and make it plain that this assignment is important for you. Important for your temple where the Holy Spirit lives. Write it down, make it plain, so those who read it will run with it. Write it down to help yourself remember to do this every day. Write it down, make it plain, to remember it, to do it every day. So that commitment will come to pass. And it is done. Amen. Right now, before we close, before we close, I know someone's watching and listening right now who doesn't understand our 
our fellowship, our coming together around the world, our praise, our worship. And I always know someone's watching who doesn't understand the determination of our fellowship to come together six days a week, praising God together around the world. So right now I'm going into closing prayers. As always, please, no typing until after the closing prayers. Anything typed during the closing prayers is deleted our respectful Holy Spirit. Amen. Right now, I'm talking to the person listening. You've been here the whole time. And you heard the praise and the worship and the and the, the sermon and the prayers. And you see the love on this channel. But right now, you're not connected because right now, your life is falling apart. Worry, fear, stress, anxiety is all over you. Friends stab you in the back. Families turned away from you. And you may even feel like giving up on life itself right now. Yet somehow you find yourself on this channel. Have no idea how you got here. And that's because God brought you here. You're not here by accident. God brought you here because God sees what you're going through right now. Physically, spiritually, or emotionally. That's why you're here. You may be here as a backslider in guilt. For whatever reason, you chose to leave God and go back to a life of sin. And now your life is falling apart because you went back into the world, the devil's world. And now the devil's telling you, once you leave God or fail God, you can never go back. And that right there is a lie from the pit of hell. No one is perfect. All have fallen short. So if you say the prayer of salvation and you fell back into a life of sin, there is nothing the devil could do to take away your salvation. Just rededicate your life, recommit your life to Christ, and there's nothing the devil could do to stop you. So whether you're walking as a backslider and you want to come back to the Lord, or right now your life is filled with hopelessness, fear, worry, stress, anxiety, or you just don't know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Either way, pray with me right now. Pray with me. Repeat after me. Father God, forgive me for the wrong I've done and the wrong I've been. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for me and my sins and was raised from the dead. I want Jesus to be Lord and Savior of my life. And I commit right now, I will not do a single thing in life or make a single decision in life without lifting up to you first. Create in me, O oh Lord, a clean heart and remove from me anything and everything that is not like you. In Jesus' name. And if you said that prayer sincerely, your spirit is not right to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a part of God that lives inside of us, that teaches us, that guides us, and also convicts us. When you're not walking God's will, the Holy Spirit will show you people, activities, and things you're doing right now in your life, which is bringing darkness into your life. And then he'll tell you how to reverse it. First of all, spend time with God every day. Not just every Sunday, every day. Spend time with God. Feed your spirit. Starve your flesh. Feed your faith. Starve your doubt every day. And the more time you spend with God every day, the more peace of mind you'll feel in your life. every day. May the Lord bless you, keep your family. Before I go there, before I, before I go that part right there, let me, don't forget this part. Let me not forget this part. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, right now, we bind the spirits of retribution, revenge, retaliation, backlash, from coming against anyone in this fellowship, because of our participation in this fellowship. And we cast all 
you the more experienced out of a mind, out of a spirit, out of a home, out of our kids, out of our marriages, back to the pit of hell from which you came. In Jesus' name. And Father God, loose, Lord, loose into the fellowship, unspeakable joy, loose peace beyond understanding, loose restoration, Lord, restore, restore every area of our life. Loose reconciliation, Lord. Bring reconciliation to marriages and families right now who are falling apart because of the devil attack, Lord. And Lord, please give me hedge protection over all the families and marriages who are not falling apart, but who the devil is still attacking every day, Lord. Loose supernatural, supernatural healing, physical healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing, by your stripes we were healed. And now we know, Lord, now we know every day to confess it. Confess it every day. I believe I receive my healing in Jesus' name. I believe I receive my healing in Jesus' name. Every day, confess it, see it, live it, breathe it, expect it. Pray as if your life depends on it. P-U-S-H. Pray until something happens. Loose supernatural overflow, financial breakthrough, supernatural debt cancellation. Lord, let your blessing, Lord, your blessings of abundance rain down, Lord, rain down on the fellowship and financial need, whatever it is, for you to supply all our need according to your riches and glory. In Christ Jesus, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not want for anything. When the Lord is my shepherd, for we're the head and not the tail. We're above and not beneath. We're the lender and not the borrower. We're blessed going in and blessed going out. We're blessed that we may be a blessing to others. We are out of debt. All of it needs to met. We have plenty more to put in store. We are children of God and nothing shall by any means hurt us or block our blessings in any way. And finally, Lord, finally, we thank you for a miracle, Lord. Each person here has a miracle they're praying for right now. And now we know, Lord, we know every day, Lord, we see it. We take time, Lord, every day to see it, visualize the miracle, see it, believe it, receive it. And once you receive it into your heart, expect it. Expect your miracle every day. We don't know the when. We'll never know the exact when. But when you don't know when, that means any day you wake up could be the day of the manifestation of the miracle you're praying for right now. So expect your miracle every day. Expect it. May Lord bless you and keep your family. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his face of divine approval upon you and give you peace that you may be a blessing to everyone you touch or speak to a blessing to everyone you pray over a blessing to everyone you pass by and bless what are open in your mouth because the love and light of the Lord is all over you 24 7 365 including Pierre so, Father God, all these things we ask, Lord, all these things we ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the fellowship say amen. Amen. Amen.